Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Are you thirsty, David? What's that? I said, are you thirsty? No. Why should I be thirsty? Well, I don't know. You, you look thirsty. I don't feel thirsty. What are you doing? I'm trying to read my newspaper. Oh. Is reading such an effort for you? Only since I've been married. That is something else about men. What is something else about men? Everything is since they've been married. They can't read since they've been married. They can't eat since they've been married. They can't go out with rubbers since they've been married. It's awful, isn't it? Since they've been married. Who said anything about it being awful? Oh, that was a good dinner. I beat you to the draw, good David. Dinner. I bet you eat better since you're married. Mm, much. Last, an improvement. Just for that, I'll come over and kiss you. Now, stay away from me. Don't you like to be kissed? Since you've been married. Uh, Claudia, Claudia, you, you hoodlum, my pipe will burn your hair. Now, oh, look I love the smell of burning hair. There. Now you've had your kiss. Good doodle. Go on. Get away. Scat. Oh, the way I get pushed around since I've been married. It's a pity about you. I think I'm thirsty. Well, why don't you go get something to drink? Well, I don't think I'm that thirsty. Then don't get something to drink. Just for that, I will get something to drink. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Anything is better than having to sit still, isn't it? I don't think you realize that my getting something to drink is pure sacrifice. You want me to be able to read in peace? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Heavens no. I am trying to keep up with our milk supply. Mm. No thirst could quench that. David, do you realize how much milk we have? I certainly do. And have you been in the icebox lately? No, I have no desire to be in the icebox lately. Now, go get yourself a glass of milk or whatever it is you want and leave me to my newspaper. I really think the only solution is to have another baby. David, do you hear what I said? The only solution is to have another baby. I'm ignoring you. After all, it's a crime to waste perfectly good milk. And babies is the best thing for using it up. We'll save money in the long run. Your ideas as to how to save money should be passed on to the Treasury Department. Oh, for heaven's sake, will you look, look at this refrigerator? I wish you'd come in and look at this refrigerator. I prefer to know how to save money. Well, that's perfectly simple. One saves money when one doesn't waste things. If we have a baby in order not to waste milk, we're saving milk. Therefore, the baby is that much cheaper. So we save money. You follow me, David? I'm just managing to keep up. Well, I wish you'd also manage to come in here and look at something. You heard me. I will not budge. All right. Don't budge. I won't. I'll be right back in the living room. Gee, you know, it's certainly a good thing we bought a refrigerator this size. That's all I can say. It would have been a ruinous thing if we hadn't bought a refrigerator big enough for a call. Honestly, when we bought that refrigerator, I had no idea a car would be such a much. Did you? Did I what? Did you think a car would be so much of a much? No, I must say I never thought of it in exactly those terms. Here, no. David. Now, Claudia, is that for me? Oh, go on, take it. I told you I wasn't thirsty. I don't care whether you're thirsty or not. It's milk. You have to drink it. You drink it. The other glass is for me. Well, drink drink both of them. I will not. I am floating in milk already. Well, then float a little more. Now, listen, David. Majesty is half your car. has nothing to do with the it. The least you can do is to drink half her now, milk. Claudia, did, will you take that glass of milk from under my nose or else or I'm else going to... Or else what? You don't frighten me. Take that glass of milk off one of my nose. I'm I'm stuffed with dinner, I think. Well, milk will wash it down. Oh, Claudia, take it away. Oh, all right. Here, I'll I'll put it on the table next to you, and when you get thirsty, you can drink it. I will never get thirsty again. Neither will I. But I'm drinking. You see, I'm just that kind of a good sport. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations. Thanks. And we would waste less milk if two of us were good sports. Now, look, darling, I... I drank milk at dinner. Remember? Mm-hmm. I, I drank milk at breakfast. That's right. 
I will drink a glass of milk before going to bed. But, and I repeat, but I will not drink a glass of milk now. All right. But I'll still just leave it here on the table. Give me a piece of your newspaper. What for? I want to put it under the glass so I won't stay in the table. Well, can't you use a coaster the for that? The coasters are on the other side of the room. The paper's in your lap. The newspaper is not made to go under a glass of milk. Oh, you're so stuffy. Whenever I say anything you don't like, you call me stuffy. But it's all right. It's all right. I don't mind. It's all right. No. I never really liked milk till Mama stopped telling me it was good for me. Oh. I think that's the psychology to use. You, you don't really like things that are good for you, ever. And here I am drinking a glass of milk without a thought of how good it is for my bones. I don't really mind it much. Oh, David, go on, have a sip. Not for your bones, just for me. Well, if I did have a sip, it would be for my bones. You know, I had no idea Majesty's milk production would be so high. Did you, David? Well, Matthew Warren said she was his finest milker when we bought her from him. Well, I didn't believe him. At least I just didn't believe that one cow could give so much milk. About uh, 20 quarts a day. 20 quarts? Mm-hmm. Oh, no wonder it feels like so much. David, there is no question about it. It's either a feast or a famine with a cow. Right now it's a feast. Well, I'm not complaining. Mm, you're not drinking either. Yep, just three weeks ago it was a famine. It was not a famine. The cow was dry. Well, it was a drought. Same thing. Then Majesty had her calf, and all of a sudden... Milk, milk, and more milk coming out of her ears. I mean, my ears. So, my good man, you're going to have to get yourself in the frame of mind to drink it. Now, look, it. Claudia, I'm doing my fair share. I I take cereal for breakfast just so I can use some milk in it. I, Wait a few. I, I take my coffee with cream. I used to I used to drink it black, you oh, know that. Oh, dear. Bertha's making nothing but souffles and puddings and creamed chicken and cream this and cream that and junk it and... I haven't seen a steak or a piece of fruit in this house for weeks. And you are accusing me of not doing my fair share. My, my blood is turning to milk in my veins. But in spite of your noble efforts, we are not keeping up with then magic. throw the rest of it away. Throw away milk. David, you're insane. Nobody throws away milk these oh, days. Oh, I, I didn't mean to throw it away exactly, but don't expect me to take more of it. Well, I must say, I certainly never expected things to turn out like this. Mm, she's a fine cow. Mm, too fine a cow. You know, she's really not a one-family cow. Well, who wants a one-family cow? When you have a cow, you have the best. Then have a glass of milk. Oh, listening to you is like listening to a record that got stuck in one groove. Do you realize, David, the kitchen's starting to smell like a dairy? Well, the smell of a dairy is a good smell. Mm, in a dairy. Not all over the house. David, the refrigerator looks as if we're in business. Bottles of milk, bottles of cream, bars of butter, skim milk, butter... Do you think the calf would like a little more skim milk, maybe? No. Well, after all, Her Majesty is the calf's own mother. You'd think the calf would be a little more possessive about the skim milk. The calf is too old to live on milk alone. She's being weaned. We shouldn't have started weaning her so soon. That was our first mistake. Anyway, David, I do want you to take a look at the refrigerator. Well, if you, you must know, I saw it. When? When I came home. What were you doing in the refrigerator? I was thirsty. Did you have a glass of milk? No, I had a glass of Coca-Cola. David, there is actually no room for anything else. Yeah, no room and, for and anything Fritz else. And Fritz spends all his day churning and separating and pasteurizing. Majesty is a very superior cow. She's too superior. Do you want to give her back? Give her back? Yeah. You crazy? No. I adore her. And the calf, the spitting image of Majesty. I just only wish she'd dry up a little. Or we could have another baby. Or she'd have another calf. David, no. No, what? Is she going to have another calf when? Now, who said anything about her having another calf? You just did. Oh, Claudia, now, but please. But you did. I did not. And, David, if that calf turns out to be a cow, and she starts giving milk, and the calf we have now gives milk, and, and Majesty keeps on giving milk at the rate she's giving milk, David, we will be a dairy farm. We're a dairy farm now. So we are. Life is pretty rugged on a farm, all this milk. Mm. What about the baby? Is he drinking his share? Okay, now listen. Now you just listen here. Don't you go blaming your offspring for this superabundance. 
You know, I've been thinking we ought to raise some milk-fed chickens. That'll oh, save us yeah, money. Oh, sure, it'd save a lot. Mm. We'd have to get all sorts of chicken equipment. Incubators, wire nettings, chicken feed. And then when we're all set, the cow would go dry. That is life. It's not as if we had enough milk for us to go into business. Do you mean, do you mean sell it? No, well, what's the matter? Yes, I mean sell it. You mean our milk? Sell it to somebody else? <laughs> you, you wouldn't part with an ounce of it, I suppose. Well, I just want to be sure that somebody appreciates it. Why, it's the best milk for miles around. And you should see how much cream there is in it, mm-hmm. David. I've seen, thank Why, you. Fritz says he's never seen anything like it. And you'll have to admit that it is delicious, David. Yes, it was. The first 30 quarts I drank were fine. Maybe I ought to learn to make cheese. Oh, no, we have no room in the icebox for cheese. Listen, maybe we ought to get a deep freeze and, and start storing butter. Mm-hmm. And when will we use it? On a rainy day. Darling, no matter how many schemes you cook up, we'll never catch up with Majesty. She's that kind of a cow. Well, she certainly makes me feel inadequate. You'd never know to look at her that so much is going on behind her eyes. One week she has a calf, beautiful calf with soulful brown eyes. And the next week, the dam breaks and milk, milk, milk. All out of the same little cow. For all that, she never looks as if she's making any effort at all. Well, she, she isn't. <sighs> what a business. You know, I wonder if man will ever be able to invent anything as practical as a cow. I doubt it. Too bad for us. Too good for us. <laughs> now that we have milked the subject dry, will you let me go back to my newspaper? Oh. On one condition, darling. All right, I'll promise anything. Drink your glass of milk. I knew it. I knew it. All right, anything. Claudia. Hmm? Claudia, this... This isn't milk. Why, of course it is. You certainly don't think I'd give you anything else at this crisis, do you? This is not pure milk. David, now don't shout. It is pure milk. It's more than pure milk. Well, what is it? It's... It's half milk and... Half cream. No, no. Have you been up and at it since early this morning with beds, dishes, cleaning, and countless household chores to do? Then why not pause to refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola? Folks in offices and factories know the value of working refreshed. Coke can bring you the same refreshment if you keep your home refrigerator well stocked. Remember to carry home a carton of Coke next time you're at the market or drugstore. Say, Joe, I brought you a little present. Well, presents are always welcome. Mm-hmm. Well, here, have this one. Have a glass of milk. Oh, well, uh, uh, will you see, David? No, 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 no. Go right on. Take it. Don't well, be shy. It's not shyness. It's loyalty and preference that makes me refuse. I'm strictly a Coca-Cola man. Well, I can't say I blame you for that. Say, Joe, can you tell me, how long is this milk flood going to last? Cheer up, David. Today the flood, tomorrow the drought. Well, that's encouraging. I'll drink this last glass of milk with a less accusing eye. Good night, Joe. Good night. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>